Good evening. Good evening, uh, Ma'am, Ma Jaika, and sir. Anish. Where is Anish? Anish is there? Yeah, good evening. Okay. okay. So people are uh, joining. I think uh, we should uh, wait for a few more minutes. me to admit all like uh, somebody is not doing this said i am doing i am admitting it uh, where is shilpa shilpa has joined uh, uh no sir she's not there Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Okay. okay. So uh, we uh, should we start uh, all the. Faculties and everything is everybody is here. I think so. Um, we can uh, we can start, uh, Abhishek. Yes, sir. We can start. Abhishek, you uh, your, your, your microphone is muted. Okay. So okay, let's start then. Hello, yes. I would request uh, all the members to please mute yourself from your end. Thank you. As quoted by Swami Vivekananda, we want that education by which character is formed, strength of mind is increased, the intellect is expanded, and by which one can stand on one's feet. On behalf of La Free Hindi Paris, I, Abhishek Nandi, welcome our today's distinguished guests, teachers, and language experts. The education system in country is evolving at a substantial pace. With the reboot of this system through the National Education Policy 2020 that will reshape India's destiny in future. Thanks to the globalization, the education of foreign language is increasing in a fast pace today. Today, we are here to discuss NEP adapted to foreign language teaching. I welcome our today's distinguished guests of honor, Dr. Rajesh Nathani, Pro Vice Chancellor, Himalaya University. He is Chairman in International Affairs, UMLAC, Bureshaw. He was advisor to Education Ministry of India on National Education Policy. We welcome you, sir. 
unfortunately we could not have madam anuradha karkun to today with us due to some unavoidable circumstances she is not well uh, she wishes her all the best for uh, today's meet our today's host and moderator mr haru mehra well known serial entrepreneur who has 25 years of experience in creating uh, creative and innovative products and services across india and europe he is the ceo and president of la free hindi paris and owner of uh, euhop.com madam uh, babusha verma one of our panelists today uh, teaches french language and literature in delhi university for more than 12 years a gold medalist for masters in french from du a certified examiner from uh, alliance française the french ministry of education for delf c1 she has traveled and worked in canada mauritius and many european and asian nations we welcome you ma'am our next panelist is dr uh, prachi doval nathani uh she is an assistant professor at amit university noida since 2004 and program coordinator of ba honors german german language literature culture history world literature and cross cultural management are among the few subjects she teaches a graduate from jnu has uh, done her c1 from goethe institute berlin germany In 2014 she acquired doctoral degree in management in field of cross cultural studies on diasporic indians we welcome you ma'am our next set of panelists are voice of industry mr jaykar saheraj head of department of french fi faips dps kuwait with more than 26 years of rich experience in teaching french worked in alliance française madras coimbatore and madurai branch for 6 years uh, in our groups in our french fraternity he is also famous to share uh, french books pdfs and manuals uh, we welcome you sir madam kamna dhir bhargava She has a brilliant academic career, being an alumni of Saint Mary Convent and Sophia College, a National Talent Scholarship holder, a gold medalist at school and college levels. She completed her MPhil from Government College Ajmer. Her journey in French language uh, began at age of thirty-five, when her son started learning French. To teach him, she started learning French herself. and completed her masters from uh, jnu in french language and literature presently she is teach, uh, teaching french and psychology at quentin stacheel classes and new delhi we welcome you ma'am our next set of panelists uh, mr anish bhola uh, mr anish bhola has an experience of teaching french for more than 13 years He is a translator and a theatre artist. He directed plays of Molière in Hindi and also performed in Alliance Française Delhi, Hyderabad, and Chandigarh. He was also the translator of Ministry of External Affairs uh, during International Solar Alliance and worked with President of Comores and Mr. Narendra Modi. He is uh, also a Hindi poet. We welcome you, sir. Now I would request our today's host and moderator, Mr. Haru Mehra, to take over the session. You're muted, sir. Haru, sir, you're muted. Okay. Yes, you're right. So. thank you abhishek thank you for the nice uh, introduction of all and uh, without losing any time uh, i would uh, uh, like to uh, you know from my end i i like to thank all 
I am actually uh, sitting um, in uh, Helsinki right now. I'm uh, actually been invited by this uh, from the next week. We have a tour with the education, uh, the, the uh, which they call the Finnish government call it happiness tour. So they're taking uh, us uh, for a tour because September onwards, the schools and university will open here. And they would like to, to restart showcasing their education to the world so that that's why i'm here and uh, so i'm 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 on this which uh, they have kindly you know they have given me this, this kind of uh, 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 you know uh, uh, room conference room today so, so without losing time uh, it's because without him and day out, you know, involved in uh, in, in in teaching and in in, in uh, you know in collaborations, uh, because most of you you don't only teach uh, you know uh, a language. You are actually a a, a, a kind of a eye of the student to the world, to the future possibilities, and uh, to higher education and many more things. So we first welcome. Uh, um, I know we. We, we ask Jaikar uh, from Kuwait, who's joined us from Kuwait, CBC schools in uh, in uh, in uh, you know Middle East, and he is one of the active voices there. So, um, uh, 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 Jaikar, if you could uh, you know tell what are the opportunities you see, and what are the uh, challenges? <laughs> Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, and um, good evening to you all and uh, all the uh, distinguished uh, panelists. Uh, good evening to you all. And um, one of the things like, you know, uh, from my perspective uh, or uh, from working in, uh, you know, a Middle East, uh, you know, country and also working in an uh, Indian school here. And uh, we have seen like, you know, because uh, I, I, I look forward to this NEP. It is something like you know, a, a innovative uh, and uh, approach by the government. And uh, what I feel like you know, it has a lot of positive, uh, you know, uh, to it. Like you know, yes, there are a lot of challenges. It's uh, how it's going to be implemented. But uh, I honestly believe, like you know, for languages, there is a good scope uh, because they also said that over here, one of the you know, a few points I really like to. Uh, highlight before I can just uh, talk about the challenges from our side. What are the things uh, like? Because they said, um, you know, the students should get the flexibility to study a language of their choice. And uh, rather than forcing a language to all, they get, uh, you know, they want the students at least to learn. Maybe they might, they want to give a uh, chance uh, for the students to learn the foreign language at a secondary level. Uh, but uh, they say like they are not going to force it on them. That's uh, you know uh, welcome uh, you know uh, point for me like you know because that's a positive thinking. Um, yes, um, whenever a new policy is going to be implemented, there will be a lot of challenges. Uh, you know they have to get the feedback and uh, they need to move forward. And uh, you know once they implement it, they can just test and try and see how it is, and they can come up and they can improve. Uh, you know there are a lot of things can be done. Uh, because uh, one of the things we have seen from our side here, uh, the passion or the love for learning a language, at least, you know, has increased over the years uh, in our, uh, starting from our very own uh, institution, like, you know, we are the uh, quick branch of uh, DPS, the Delhi Public School. And uh, we uh, started at least, you know, if we have to say like, you know, with uh, uh, when I, uh, 10 years back, at least we had only around 500 students. Now we have crossed uh, 3,000 uh, 300 students who are learning French in our institution, and it's keep increasing. So we have to, every year, it is almost like we have around 100 students are moving to French. You know, we, uh, outside India, at least, you know, we still follow the two, uh, you know, language uh, system, like we have English and the second, at least we have it, uh, give the choice to the students, like, you know, between Hindi and uh, French. Uh, of course, uh, we have students of all the na different nationalities, so we can't, uh, you know, force the Indian languages over here. So that's why at least, you know, CBAC also has allowed uh, the institutions outside India, you know, just to have those two language. Uh, so more, that's why we find a lot of students, at least, you know, uh, they move to French 
and particularly at least you know we find uh, uh, once uh, you know from class 5 onwards uh, maybe till class 5 at least you know there are our indian parents who would love to uh, their children uh, to learn uh, you know hindi and uh, beyond that at least you know they want them to learn a foreign language so and also because of the demands in the industry right now and also for the mobility at least you know even for uh, to go to europe at least for their higher studies uh, now the students they even at a early age at least you know they are looking towards uh, you know learning a foreign language and has increased uh, over the years so uh, we find at least you know because one of the uh, you know the uh, implementation like you know of nep they have said uh, you know the three language uh, system I, we are not very sure like you know it is whether it is going to apply to the schools outside india because uh, that's going to be a really tough at least because if they are going to apply it over here in the schools uh, here because we have uh, students of uh, all the nationalities like so we can't uh, force them to do that and uh, that's one and uh, secondly we also have you know because uh, by learning a foreign language at least you know the students also empower themselves you know because uh, when they also get to uh, learn a language it is not just learning a language at least they get to learn their culture and also they just uh, you know because in this today's world at least you know they get to uh, uh, appreciate they live to live in harmony with others uh, you know they need to know their culture you need to appreciate them you know and uh, that's uh, this language learning a foreign language it's of course uh, it helps them at least to uh, change the mindset and uh, also to widen their uh, you know this scope uh, and also you know that is nowadays at least you know the last one and a half years at least it is thought as actually it is you know the skills uh, one of the main uh, you know the points of nep at least you know uh, they wanted at least because there is a great demand of skill based learning so nep at least it's uh, going to you know fulfill that uh, uh, you know that's a right step at least towards that because it's all more about multidisciplinary very uh, once the students at least are the products at least are, when they leave the school they want them to be a multidisciplinary you know uh, more focus on uh, you know their skills uh, skill based learning and also uh, conceptual uh, you know knowledge that's what they are looking for and uh, you know because so that uh, if they have to survive they have to do really well in the market or even when they go to higher studies when they just Uh, Jekar, you have about one minute. If you can, uh, uh, you know, just uh, let us know the what are the challenges that you are facing and what are the what what are your apprehensions? Yeah, the only thing it is, uh, as I said, like you know, maybe when they are going to have this uh, three language, so you know, maybe from the lower class, I think they say they are going to focus more on the mother tongue. which uh, you know it's going to be really tough for, for the uh, schools outside india and uh, which is very difficult I, i i don't know it is how it's going to be implemented and secondly at least you know forcing to learn an indian language like you know sanskrit or hindi like you know um, uh, for us like the schools outside india it's going to be a really challenge uh, because we can't uh, do that like because we have tried it uh, all these years and uh, it has you know uh, failed so uh that's these are the challenges like you know we look for, you know look at it and uh, because if we are going to if they are going to allow the schools outside india uh, the government that is going to allow our cbc like going to allow the schools outside india to continue with the same uh, two language system it will work but otherwise uh, because implementing it uh, as it is in schools outside india it's going to be really uh, tough so these are some of the things like you know we find it i think it is uh, especially for languages sir okay thank you thank you jaykar and we will thank come you. back to dr nikani for this question because i noted it down uh, and now let, let's go to uh, madam kamna bhargo ma'am what are your doubts apprehensions and and then and, and what opportunities do you see sure sir uh, first of all i would again point out the positives in the nep 2020 uh it started at first nep was there in 1968 uh, introduced by indira gandhi ji and uh, there we uh, it started with three language formula right after that in 
everything was repeated verbatim so there were no not made, uh, very many changes now again we have we are talking about three language formula in a different you know a little different context now when we talk about three language formula here what is the net says is in the primary section and preferably up to class 8 we are going to teach the students core concepts because they learn core concepts in their own mother tongue but is mother tongue if the mother tongue is different from the regional language then what do we do if there are transferable people suppose in uh, in tamil nadu there is a bengali living right so his his mother tongue is bengali and uh, he's he's forced to learn tamil language in tamil nadu which is like there are transferable people throughout india people move it's a huge country with 122 languages so how do we you know kind of make it make sure that three language formula is going to be a success when since 1968 it has not been a success so now what is new today why suddenly we want all our class up to class 5th or preferably up to class 8 why do we want a blanket for each and every student in this country in this huge country with 122 languages so you can't make a policy which is a blanket policy for everyone they are first generation learners fine for them their parents because they are first generation learners mother tongue or regional tongue which we speak in their day to day lives will be good but what about fourth generation or third generation learners who already are good in foreign languages and if you consider foreign language if you consider english as a foreign language i'm sorry english is not a foreign language it is an it is now very much indian language it is an official language it is a linking language and there is a huge population which know at least not fluently but who can speak and understand english so why do we consider why do we not consider english as an indian language is my question like if i i just read um, nep in detail a few days back after i was invited for this so there was a quote that about 15% of indian population only speaks english and inadvertently they speak in front of hindi speaking population and then the hindi speaking population feels bad about it so what what do we want to progress or do we want to come down if we want to progress and if we consider english as our own language why do we not give chance to our youngsters to learn as we have learned now we are saying no you don't need to learn english or at least not uh, all the subjects in english medium you take english just as a subject as a foreign language it's not good it's not progressive it might be digressive in fact this is what i feel and feel strongly about it. right okay thank you so I now I have yeah. Points. <laughs> yeah yeah please please go ahead you have about a minute yeah okay so uh, first we have to consider the benefits of english speaking so english speaking population in india today if we did not know english this conference wouldn't happen we wouldn't have been able to of course we all know what are the benefits of english speaking people uh, uh, english speaking uh, i don't have to repeat it all exams all competitive exams all government exams they want candidates who know how to speak english even in ias there is an essay paper which like people have uh, you know kind of protested against it but it still exists the essay paper in english we also have to consider the benefits of learning foreign language suppose uh, 20 years back or 40 years back somebody at the helm of affairs had said no english for indians what would have been the situation of indians today in the world of globalization the same thing if we have a vision the same thing is going to happen with foreign languages if we are not learning foreign languages we would be backward we are not going to call be called a progressive society i mean besides uh, having the job opportunities and this and that there are other concepts also other things also english is a foreign language for chinese english is a foreign language for japanese for french for germans 
and still they are you know kind of promoting it to a huge scale because they understand that english is a world language now and the same way if indian if in india we have uh, we have english as our own language then we need to promote other languages because indian population is huge and there is there are very kind of depopulation kind of concept going on not sorry not depopulation uh, in western world the population is less and indians are going to take over the whole world as we have already taken over america and so many other countries all indians who are educated well educated who know foreign languages are going to go abroad and they are being invited and if we don't allow our children to learn these foreign languages we are doing a disservice to our children I think okay. I thank you. Thank you. Come. We will words. have. We will. Yeah. No. No. We will have more. Uh, like. And I have a lot more to say. Can, yeah. So. So let's keep it for the discussion period. Sure. Uh, you know. Sure. And uh, thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Jaykar. Thank you, Kamna. And now we go to Anish Bola, who teaches in Mount Carmel. Uh, yes, Anish. Uh, you oh, can good go evening. ahead. A oh, very good evening to everyone. Uh, when I thought about this new education policy, I. Uh, thought about uh, three people's uh, point of view first of all students point of view second from teachers point of view and third from the educational uh, private educational institutes uh, like frindi or other institutes uh, from their point of view. first of all i would say that this as you know that this education policy new education policy has come after 34 years first thing are there any major changes in foreign languages second thing uh, will it be benefited for all of us third thing uh, is there any problem in that so i will discuss about all these things first thing like in this um, new education policy uh, this has been implemented in uh, university uh, delhi university and other universities they have accepted this but in schools uh, till now we have not adopted it completely this was uh, nep 2020 but in schools we have adopted some things like uh, some competitions which are related to nep and all but uh, you cannot say ki, okay so many changes have happened after this new education policy secondly in this new education policy this uh, the government wants that everybody should be at the same level because in the globalization like okay graduation uh, is for four years after that one year ma and Uh, there is no mfil but this is what government wants okay, okay our students will go abroad and they will not face any problem but in school i do not say okay okay i have seen any changes there would be many job opportunities after uh, adopting this new education policy and like if you want to learn literature of other language you can learn okay you are uh, learning a foreign language you can learn but there are some problems there are some problems in school like in school till eighth it is the third language if you see there is a problem in uh, as we talk about globalization but if you see the text which is similar in all the books like uh, uh, one student will ask another student where are you going i'm going to school in school where are you going i'm going to the cafeteria what will you have in cafeteria i will have sandwich and the lemonade till eighth in all the books you will see till eighth and after that you see 9th and 10th where the subscribe books uh, in french or uh, other languages there you again start from a b c d if you see the beginning uh, the initial chapters they are starting from a b c d there also the initial text they remain same so where is the what do you say progression in that after 10th secondly mm, as a teacher we are not uh, what do you say we are not allowed or we are not permitted to come out of reading and writing reading and writing in class speaking you say okay speaking must be there but our syllabus is not speaking oriented in cbse schools even if you see in 9th and 10th the new syllabus if you see uh, 40 marks are for uh, like their exam the mid term uh, the, the first board exam but 10 marks uh, out of those 10 marks the periodic test assignments and speaking and listening so it means you say that out of those 50 marks uh, uh, like 5 or 2.5 marks have been given for speaking and listening how would our kids compete with others when they will not be able to speak listen read and write 
even if after reading the text if you see other languages hindi sanskrit marathi tamil telugu they have story books in french we don't have story books our text is very limited till eight till eight cbsc and ncrt has prescribed the books but till eight we don't have any um, ncrt or cbsc book in french uh, correct me if i am wrong we don't have in 9 10 secondly in 9 10th we have books for french prescribed by cbsc but we don't have books from uh, book we don't have books for spanish Tra- uh, spanish is taught in 9 10 10th but cbsc is very lenient there is no book for spanish i'm shocked in my school the teacher is giving her own notes so there should be some books in german i think there is a in german there is a book from cbsc but in other same way if you want to learn italian or portuguese another level there is no option there is no option cbsc very is very limited uh, with very particular languages secondly these languages they are centralized only in um, big metropolitan cities big cities if somebody from uh, ghaziabad or uh, some other states from villages they want to learn they don't have any op- they don't have many options they should also learn so that we should in- we should also increase the job opportunities for them. there is no doubt that the demand has increased but the way the government is very lenient about uh, foreign language uh, teaching and foreign language education that is very that is very demand has increased you see a child has learned french till 10 till 8 third language till 10th um, second language but there are very few schools which are offering french in 11th and 12th so after 10th there would be a break so if somebody wants to do ba french honors then he will have to start from the beginning or he will have to join uh, aliens suppose if i am a student in 11th i have taken science pcn so i am busy with <laughs> physics chemistry uh, math tuitions i will not have time to learn uh, foreign language from outside secondly if you see um, that uh, uh one thing yeah anish if you can wrap it up in about next uh, 30 or 30 seconds yes sir and for teachers okay i will say for teachers also it is very difficult like every time the pattern is changing so teachers are making the question papers again and again for students it is uh, easier but for teachers it is becoming little difficult like earlier i used to take 5 minutes or uh, maybe 7 minutes to check one paper but now it is taking 15 to 20 minutes as it has become objective why so i have to see all the options thirdly i would say about the other private institutes like prindi and others you people are also facing so many problems publishers are also facing so many problems like nowadays nobody wants to buy the hard copy everybody wants to take the soft copy and us may be because of online so people are just taking it for granted text was already less but in online people have stopped reading the text they just the questions they want to do it somehow and uh, this is what i would say i have some other okay. points also but <laughs> yeah we can we can we can have we'll have a discussion so we can bring it bring them back later so then thank you anish so uh, now it's uh, you sir uh, dr can you if uh, you can because you are the person who has to really work with the government on this uh, drafting this uh, new education policy so you will be working with the ex uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the education minister dr nishan who actually during the who period this game and and uh, all the all salute uh, him for the thank you to reform uh, and uh, so but the the the, the, the doubt remain the doubt like uh, these are the some that uh, uh, who have aired their uh, i have some teacher was saying oh this is just like anything will come and after two uh, years it will also go just like this is here but it is possible and now that this will also be like that it is a moment i think it is going to be and this is like somewhere anna man Anish said that uh, the, uh, the the whole curriculum is 
focus on reading and writing and uh, cramming and giving an exam and that's it you know that, that is not skill development that is not how skill is developed here in europe you know i can see i have yet to studying in school so i know that uh, the, the the other thing is that uh, like whether this this thing like jaykar raised a very valid question whether this would be there in those what about those 200 schools which are there in middle east where even uh, you know there there are pakistani students studying in indian schools cbsc schools so probably they are also singing our national anthem in the morning so it's like uh, there are so many uh, you know uh, the, the embassies uh, in nepal in other uh, where we have cbsc schools so if you can sir just uh, you know give your view points and uh, you know on on all these issues and then we go further A very uh, good evening to all of you. Uh, thank you uh, very much for inviting me, and uh, I, I think I have the hardest job, you know, uh, just uh, <laughs> to your questions and the apprehensions you have. Uh, I would just like to give you a very brief background. See, like here we are all like, you know, we are, we are just uh, we are confining ourselves to foreign teachers. So let's not be, you know, I, I should say I would use the word selfish. Let's look at the larger perspective. What it does for the, what it does for the, the whole uh, student community, for the teachers, and all that. So, just to give you a background, uh, normally people say that uh, this uh, uh, policy, uh, the, the, this was framed after 34 years. I, I would say, and uh, at uh, many uh, you know uh, public forum, uh, we have pointed out that this is the first policy which is uh, you know India-centric policy, and in the in uh, if we just as uh, the country got independence in 1947, so India's, uh, you know, in India's history, this is the first, I should say, uh, just uh, in Hindi we call it Bharat Kendri, and uh, it's so India-centric uh, policy. This is the first time it has come. So uh, all your apprehensions that you know it will come, it will go, you know, it, it doesn't stand. Secondly, just to give you some comfort. Uh, Lord Macaulay was here uh, with his policy, and uh, which uh, many of uh, uh, things were still there, and uh, as you all know, uh, they said uh, that they wanted to make uh, you know a, a workforce available for the Britishers. But even uh, Cambridge University, when they uh, looked at this policy, so Macaulay, he was an uh, alumni of Cambridge, and uh, the same university uh, has written to uh, the then Education Minister, Honourable Ramesh Pokhran Nishan, that uh, they see uh, some real tra transformation. And these transformations, uh, they would like to work with government of India to take these transformations to the other part of the world. So this is just an example I'm showing you that it's not that, you know, we may have some difficulty. See, what we did in this education policy, which many of you may not know, that this is world's biggest, uh, we uh, created a, a mechanism by which it, it is the world's uh, biggest innovation, open innovation. We got uh, 2.5 lakh suggestions. We involved all the MPs, all MLAs, all the secretaries. We involved all the universities, wrote out to all the vice chancellors, to all the schools, all the boards. And uh, it's uh, the fact that we wanted every stakeholder to have a say. And uh, so that, you know, we all have ownership. And if I agree, you know, there may be some parts where, you know, uh, people have not been catered to. But then at the end of the day, it's not that, you know, something has been written down and uh, uh, especially, I'm uh, you know just uh, coming to the question that uh, yeah yeah uh, that uh, you know people do uh, people will be forced to study Hindi or Sanskrit. It's not the case. I don't think so that uh, you know our uh, schools in uh, Middle East or for that sake in Moscow or even in Nepal, if they want to do it. And why we did this? Uh, why uh, you know uh, one of the speakers raised the question of uh, like uh, people studying in their own language. It was just. Because you know, Dr. Kasturi Rangan was there, and there were a couple of other scientists who did feel, and as you all know, there are studies that if uh, suppose we are thinking, and uh, you know, they say that uh, the best uh, the development of brain uh, it happens during your initial years, and your thinking process it happens in you know your in your mother tongue. But if suppose I am from Uttarakhand, and you know I am a native Gadwali speaker, and if I am in Tamil Nadu, my parents live over there, so. It's not that, you know, I'll just ask for Gadwali or any other, other state because the fact that I'm I'm there in Tamil Nadu, as a kid, I, I will be picking up 
Tamil, and this happens. You know, I have, uh, having stayed away in uh, away from India, I have uh, you know my daughters and uh, you know other my friends. They they learn particular people in Europe. They learn pick up that language. So that should not be a problem. And uh, the fact that uh, you know uh, at least like uh, more than hundred countries have shown interest in this new education policy, and uh, they, uh, there have been because uh, like I remember a program where invoice from different countries they congratulated uh, the government. Because as you all know, Korean, Japanese, Thai, German, Spanish, Portuguese, uh, you know, and Russian, uh, we are making uh, you know attempts to have it, uh, these languages at the secondary level. There are issues uh, because see, I cannot expect that you know somebody would teach my uh, daughter, uh, you know, in a remote Uttarakhand village, uh, you know, she could learn German. And uh, but you know, there are examples like this. One of our uh, co-panelists sitting here, Dr. Prachi, you know, uh, so she learned German all the way, you know. She studied from that same, and uh, so she was able to prove it. And even uh, our host for today, so he happens to be from this state, and with all the hardship, whatever he has done, he has proved himself. So I think that uh, there and uh, there's a one like uh, you know, for the first time we have come up with Indian Institute of Translation and Interpretation, which will be one of the you know IITs or you know IMs for translation and other uh, that uh, kind of activity. So the idea is that we do want to make it, this country, uh, you know, a, a strategic power. We, 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 we again, you know, again and again, you must have heard of uh, the, you know, the term Busho Guru Bharat and in the creation or like the building of New India. And we do feel that, uh, you know, we cannot do it uh, staying here all by ourselves. And we do need to uh, go across the globe, prove our superiority, and uh, we, you know, uh, be strategically uh, competent. I, I should say. And for that, we do need the languages and uh, all the universities, the UGC and all our agencies like the AICD or the NCT, they have been told that uh, we they should be promoting more and more uh, foreign languages because uh, at one point of uh, time, uh, you know, there was no, uh, I should say, uh, you know, the things were at a standstill. But uh, now there have been like uh, specific measures taken uh, that people are being encouraged uh, to uh, uh, take uh, foreign languages and as far as you know uh, your uh, yeah, as uh, one of the speakers was mentioning that we have a limited uh, literature and all that so uh, please uh, don't depend upon ncrt ncrt is like you know they've got a huge mandate and uh, the basic idea is you know uh, i believe they are able to provide science and maths books to all our you know uh, students uh, we have more than uh, 35 crores of students, which is, uh, you know, more than America's population. So we have a huge population to cater. We have like, you know, we have more than, uh, I should say, uh, uh, one crore teachers and uh, more than 16 lakh schools. So, and uh, 1300 uh, universities. So it may be that some fields are left, but then at the end of the day, like if, if we if we really want to do, I have, I've seen some schools, some of the schools doing real nice job here in Dehradun itself or in other parts of India, I've, I've been, traveling quite a lot and uh, they've been you know uh, like i remember during my school days uh, we were made to study history books uh, which were uh, coming from professors from us and it, this is up to the teacher like how you can you know uh, get it across to your students so i think we have to make extra attempt i'm not trying to defend that you know all uh, that has been done is that you know like but the intention of uh, the government you know and uh, the minister and all the stakeholders was very clear that they wanted a uh, a policy uh, which would, uh, you know, propel India, which would propel India to be a, you know, superpower, to be a knowledge hub. And uh, for that, uh, it's very much required that we have a very uh, efficient system uh, for providing foreign uh, languages, uh, you know, as a part of our uh, studies. And uh, I, I believe, uh, like, uh, you know, uh, they've done. And the fact that uh, some, if there are some gaps remaining, so I am very much sure, like the CBSE and other people, they are very much considered. And it's not, as I said, it's not that it's written over there, so you know, it will be like forced upon. Because three, uh, three formula, three language formula, it was there since ever. And the fact that, you know, uh, why we said so, because we said like non uh, Hindi people would learn Hindi, and in uh, Hindi speaking areas, for example, in Himachal Pradesh and other places, we were uh, asking our students to learn Telugu or Tamil, just for that national integration and you know other, uh, just uh, having a more uh, diverse uh, ecosystem. But again, uh, CBSE and all other authorities they are very considerate to it, and uh, uh, the fact that you know many of our schools, you know the Kendriya Vidyalayas abroad, so uh, 
there will be uh, uh, at several forums it has been said that nothing would be thrust upon uh, anybody and uh, everything whatever has been suggested whatever has been uh, given in the policy is just for the betterment of our students uh, for, for our teachers and uh, at the end of the day you know we all uh, i think we are aligned and uh, we all want to make india uh, you know uh, knowledge superpower so so you know the uh, i think uh, you know the, this is the main philosophy behind this uh, new education policy thank you so thank you. Uh, so so thank you thank you uh, dr nani uh, so you are saying what you are saying that, that uh, the apprehension is uh, some teachers are saying that this is just a passe that with the you know, change of the government or change of this thing this uh, will not go away this is this is here to stay in a long term basis. Right. Yeah. Yes. See, Haru, uh, what happens is like, uh, why would anybody change it? Uh, see, like, uh, they're all good things are there. Like, uh, the this policy aims at, uh, you know, this is innovative. Uh, this is, you know, like, uh, this is based on equality. We want to, uh, like, uh, raise our standard powers of our university. We are creating institute of eminence. We are trying to uh, have more uh, stress on uh, uh, new research and uh, so. why would anybody reverse anything uh, you know that is in the mm -hmm. benefit of the country maybe any government so this is nothing like you know there's any ambiguity about it even uh, for the, just uh, again uh, you know uh, shashi tharoor ji very uh, you know openly he came in the uh, you know uh, like uh, uh, in the favor of this policy and uh, he was very much uh, i should say uh, very much in support and personally he came to visit the minister and uh, the, and all these ministers all these uh, Uh, with the uh, very much uh, you know uh, uh, i am uh, like uh, with uh, gratitude to all the stakeholders because i know they they work day and night to give us the suggestions but i can just say that any other policy uh, in india it has not been welcomed that much uh, you know uh, if you just uh, all they have been a couple of policies you know in the in this this last two three years so new education policy i haven't seen from any quarter the only thing there is a three language formula but then again the chief minister of and the education minister of all the southern state they did meet and uh, every all these mps were taken into uh, you know confidence and uh, and then they all agreed okay like you know this is a, this is what when their intention was told so i think uh, it, this is here to stay and believe me that uh, see most of the policies are good and they say 75% of the policy they fail because of uh, you know lack of implementation so if this policy is implemented in let and spirit in a time bound manner so uh, i can assure all of you you know not because of the fact that i was a part of it and uh, but the fact that being a academic can be being somebody who who was trained who had the good fortune of being trained in us and having worked over there in us institutions so i can guarantee you uh, that uh, you know this is here to stay and uh, uh, we are uh, you know in another like uh, maybe like another 10 20 years you will see india emerging as a superpower in uh, knowledge sector thank you thank you we all uh, you know uh, wish for that uh, and uh, uh, so sir uh, uh, i know kamna has one question uh, and also uh, mrs sarisa from uh, gandhi nagar gujarat uh, she also uh, has some question which she wrote in the chat box so we are going to keep these questions for the for the for the discussion part uh, i know these are some direct questions so let's go to babu sha uh, babu Uh, I've known you for many years, and you have uh, presented both, uh, especially in the university, and also uh, with the, you are attached to so many schools, and you have written uh, textbooks for schools, uh, you know, uh, students, and all that thing. So, and, and so you, you would be probably the right person to ask the question that why everything is so skewed towards reading and writing. The uh, the thing that Anish Bola said that our cerebral skills. Uh, is is uh, is not adapted uh, to the to the new anything because uh, so so how how do you see uh, things change and and what as an author like you would uh, do and uh, you know uh, uh, for, 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 to make it better for the teachers to, to roll out this uh, this new anything because uh, we all agree that anything uh, uh, you you the face of it the draft of it. It, it looks the most wonderful thing that has happened to India, but then 
practically when we want to implement it, the systemic changes that we have, the the how do you see that this is uh, going to and this is this can this is general. This is not only uh, for foreign languages. So reading, writing, cramming, and uh, the, uh, giving the exam and uh, passing it is is is, is uh, seems to entrenched into our system. Okay. Well, good evening to everyone. I'm audible. Yes, I am. Okay. Yes, Perfect. yes. Fine. Yes. Well, I don't know. I mean, I think uh, the new education policy, the word itself says it's new. You know, whenever there's something new, everybody's scared. We're excited, we're curious, but everybody's scared. I think the first apprehension everybody has is, since I'm a French expert, I would say, is French going to stay in the schools, in the universities? To what I have understood, French is there. It's there in one of the list of the foreign languages, so we are not scared that French is going in. Yes, how we are going to teach it, when and where we are going to teach it, there are multiple questions, there are multiple perspectives. Mr. Jacker, of course, has raised the question of outside India, which I think is a major uh, thing. As an author, I would say, before I address the question as a master, I think as a teacher also, uh, in the university also we face a lot of challenges. Yes, with the new education policy, yes, of course, again. And the challenges, I would say, personally have also increased because we have the pandemic. So the new education policy, of course, has its own challenges, but the pandemic and the online classes is increasing those challenges. Uh, also, since we have online class, I think, I don't know if I can say why, you know, the syllabus is focused on written or reading about, I don't know about other languages, but the French, the first thing, yet yeah, I talk about teacher and say, even in my book, I would say the first thing that people ask me, grammar hai, ab grammar mm -hmm. hai. So the mm -hmm. first thing our concept is, grammar hona chahiye, I don't know, uh, I was a student in Alien Francaise, and my teacher used to say, throw the grammar book. Mm -hmm. Talk to me in French first. Mm -hmm. he, and I think uh, Mr. Anish Bola would be the right person to do it. Like we do in theatre. It's all about speaking. It's about mannerism. You keep the script in front of you, but you, of course, you cramp it. You mug it up. Like the grammar, we do it. But of course, you know, eventually it is, you know, our own individual also comes up with it. So the focus on the speaking and everything is shifting with the textbook. Uh, with my book also, if you talk to me personally, there used to be a CD. The publishers have also been, you know, addressed to this question. The CD, we don't need it anymore. We need online, uh, you know, material available. Nobody wants to buy the textbook because it's the online class. Everybody wants to have the online book and the uh, audio also online. So this change, of course, is happening to what I know. And I think a lot of publishers are, uh, you know, adjusting to this fact that since we have online classes, now we're focusing to the speaking part and the listening part to online version. There mm -hmm. are, I think, a yeah. lot of reasons behind why we focus on the written part. Normally, I think, when we learn a language, we normally first visualize it. And once we visualize, it's somehow easier for us when it's written first and then we try to speak it. I think this is the methodology which we follow. Everybody is doing that. We see mm -hmm. an apple. We don't try to teach that this is an apple. We first show the photo of an apple. We show apple, how is it written in French. And then the student is reading apple, apple, apple. And we are mugging it up. Yeah. This is why the focus is on the reading rather than the speaking uh, or the listening. Also, I think the other factor could also be the number of students we have in a class. A CBSC school, I don't know about uh, outside India, but at least here in India, what I have seen, there are 40 to 50 students in a same class. I started my career as a school teacher. So when I used to be a school teacher, that time also my class used to have 40 students. To make each and every child speak in a class is a challenge for the teacher. Mm -hmm. My book has a lot of role plays. And I think majority I've kept it in couple or in a group. Because 
to make a monologue is very difficult for a teacher to hear for the students. My university, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, I teach a diploma uh, level, which is an A2. At my level also, I think even my students are adults, but making every child speak becomes a task in a class, which is, I don't know. And in schools, it's more even more difficult when, I don't know, we have a 40 minute or a 30 minute class. Yeah. No, I, I think, uh, Babusha, you rightly put it. And as one comment I can read from the chat, in this, uh, this um, uh, you know, lady says, Malika says, that you're talking about 40 teachers, 50 uh, students in a, in, a, in a school, in colleges, even the number is uh, up yes, to 100. Yes, yes. <laughs> So we we be taking this question, we go to Dr. Prachi because she, you are a university teacher. So I would like to, you know, kind of uh, ask you uh, the, the, one related question to this. Uh, is that, uh, how do you, like, do you think that the books are passe, that uh, the teacher, like, for example, uh, like my kids who study here uh, in, uh, in Europe, uh, the teacher, uh, they, they, they don't have any books. Right. You know, uh, they don't have any books. It's like kind of uh, the teacher knows the syllabus. The teacher uh, does research on that. She does uh, her own kind of uh, you know uh, material and all that. She teaches this and she makes it a wonderful experience to the students. That's it. Like they, they don't have manual. They, they they don't have you know and and they keep it uh, whatever they have. They keep it at, uh, the so, so so is book passe? We are moving away from the books and. Uh, I will ask Dr. Nethani in the uh, in the end is about the teachers training program because uh, you know uh, what will we teach our uh, uh, the NEP uh, uh, success will depend on the success of the teachers of the training of the teachers. So this we will do. But uh, Dr. Prashi, if you can just you know tell me, like, do you think personally that books are passe, and how how do you adapt to the university? Like you are teaching in the university. You you are attached with the with the largest private university and you have many students there and and, and many of your programs they are global programs you send students abroad and and you have integrated programs with the universities I know uh, you know uh, uh, this for sure so so how do you think do you think that NEP gives you an opportunity and and how how will you adapt it uh, uh, for the universities. I think, in, first of all, in front of Babusha, the author, I cannot admit that books are passe. <laughs> I, I hope not. <laughs> and, and definitely not. Huh? That was just a joke to begin with, Babusha. But definitely never a passe. But yes, what Anish, I think, needs to, because he's a younger teacher, I guess, a book is never, a CBSC prescribed book is never the complete manual. Now, we always take into class so many things as a teacher. And then you talk of multidisciplinary and then came into the, I was so surprised. I was talking to my colleagues. I was, I said, I do not know of any education uh, that, that is uni, you know, you know, linear. We've always studied in multidisciplinary manner. I have never walked into my language class and not taught literature there, not picked up a poem someday on a theme, even with the beginner day one level, I take something on love, labor, everybody connects. Everybody mm -hmm. connects instantly. It's not from the book. And there are then, through that, I tell them articles, right? Okay, see, this one has the um, masculine, this one has the. So though for those two, three words that appear in the in the poem, they never forget the remainder of their life, the articles. So you bring about concepts like that. You take in, you integrate. There are, because A1 level, we'll have umpteen books. One book just does just to one topic better, the other does. So books will never be passe. But teachers will have to, there will only one manual is never a good policy, right? So that doesn't work. And as we said, uh, yes, with the online thing, but the classes that when somebody said college goes go up to 80 and 100, we've known that. And with the pandemic and the online platform, they went up to 150 and 200 also at times. <laughs> and which is unimaginable a scenario for a foreign language teacher. Because mother tongue, you learn intuitive. You might you you might have your spelling poor till fifth standard sixth में सही हो जाएगी कभी तो आपको धनी चली जाएगी कान में कि छोटी और बड़ी sometime it will you know it will ring but for a foreign language large classrooms is anyway a big challenge 
so the fashion of having foreign language and not having the passion for it is the sad thing that is happening with the universities today. it is such a trend but nobody bothers whether it is being imparted in the right uh, vein as it should be right so i think that is what is missing our focus is wrong especially dr nithani and all a challenging question to you uh, am i allowed haru sir yes yes of course to ask him a question that with yes, the yes. with the impetus on this mother tongue uh, which is absolutely a brilliant idea I totally agree that a child develops its you know thinking speaking everything in the mother tongue in a and it is a european model where most countries are monolingual from their length to breadth we are a diverse nation with where the mother tongue is also so permeable that in one district in up you have another lesser of the language in the other one another one yeah no so how will we define mother tongue in such a in such a nation is my is my question to you how do we define mother tongue okay yeah it, it is such permeable boundaries no you're muted sir so uh, okay uh, so I, i'll just you know uh, so our host happens to be from kumau hills and our uh, the, our the, the you know the ma'am ask, asking questions is from gadwal hills but uh, when, <laughs> no, no, but i was born and brought up in delhi yeah no, huh? no but you know right. i'm yeah. just uh, trying to give an example right so now if uh, you know if you guys are being taught it's, it's just uh, you know so we won't be doing it in uh, you know gadwali or kumauni hmm. it as ma'am right they are they are dialects yeah they are dialects yeah. they're not they're dialects. but even yeah. you know uh, ma'am said uh, we india has got 122 languages and uh, so in the uh, you know the, uh, actually there were many more languages but some of them are like very you know very less people speak and uh, they use it so the fact that uh, i think it will be just confined to uh, you know uh, based on like uh, what i have been hearing and what i have been seeing it will just like somebody is in tamil nadu it will be tamil somebody is in andhra it will be telugu somebody is in gurdaspur it will be punjabi and uh, in haryana for example where you don't have it again haryanvi is not a language so it's a dialect so, so, yeah, so, so uh, you there uh, you would say it is hindi hindi okay. so uh, and uh, so in uh, for example in himachal pradesh you have a, a couple of different things but uh, at the end of the day like you know it's it should be hindi but Uh, then if uh, you want to move to sikkim you can say it's nepali okay. and uh, it, it is just uh, like uh, you know this document that you see of nep it's a very condensed form of, uh, condensed form the uh, the draft that we received it's uh, like a very fat book you know it's just and they have given all those you know uh, resources all those uh, like uh, research uh, uh, that's done in europe in america and some of the people who are involved in framing this policy are uh, they Uh, come from universities like Princeton, Harvard, and people who are from Indian or like you know uh, Indian background, so they uh, do understand the complexity. So, so all I want to say is that uh, it's just a we're trying to make it uh, convenient. And uh, as somebody was, as a, you know, uh, like when one of the meetings they said, uh, like you know, if you just uh, somebody just falls down, so the first word you know he or she will utter will his or her mother tongue, you know, so. so it is just like that so there is even the thinking process it's just a uh, you know agree, agree. yeah so so the psychology is established yeah yeah right so it's just uh, only the fact that the one the, the major language is the 22 i don't think they would just go like uh, you know uh, trying to find out difference if something is said in merit or you just move around yeah so but if uh, as the government has plans to <coughs> revamp the entire syllabus into these regional languages which they were studying in english for yeah, first yeah, regional uh, instruction see, is going see, to change see the, this is a big challenge uh, recently because i, I don't know whether uh, if you are following papers and all that there, there was a, like a big uh, un cry that you know we need to to have engineering uh, you know is uh, hindi as a you know as a media by instruction for our engineering students and uh, uh, at least uh, like 14 uh, institutions uh, they came out uh, with uh, you know uh, with their syllabus and they've already started but uh, again uh, you know having uh, said all the, the because see like there's a like we need to do a lot more we may like it's very easy to say okay like japan is there because of japanese germans are there because of the german and you know but it took them you know huge centuries 
like uh, just uh, you know uh, being a science student and uh, i completely understand that like suppose you hear many many words you know you don't have any uh, alternative in hindi because of the fact that you know uh, you uh, because these are some of the very recent inventions very uh, recent discoveries and uh, although the, that we say we have uh, one of the world biggest vocabulary so this is impractically uh, this is very impractical to say that you know we will be able to do it within a given span of time right. it could be a evolving process i can say and uh, depending upon like how much determined we are how much uh, dedicated we are the time span can become a little uh, you know less but then at the end of the day it's a huge huge task in front of us and uh, it it will take a whole lot of time and uh, just uh, because of the fact if you just want to just uh, switch our uh, you know just switch over to a particular system uh, that will be detrimental to the system uh, and uh, nobody will allow it or nobody will do it so yeah but i think yeah. the scenario is slightly you. different here japan they were always talking japanese yeah but like i would take from kamna's point it could be parents concern somebody who started a child has studied in the english medium and the second offspring who's much younger is being taught in this regional how are you going to you know do away with this gulf that we are creating it i'm sure the parents would be concerned my kids are grown up no issues right now <laughs> yeah uh, so see like uh, i don't think uh, that you know uh, again uh, you know it goes to uh, uh, for example cbse schools or you know again uh, like i think kamna uh, ma'am mentioned about like you know uh, people uh, getting transfers from uh, different places especially in kendriya vidyalayas where uh, you know you have got uh, forces yeah, people yeah, from the forces people are always moving two years they are two, always right? on the move so so i, I think the uh, what uh, you know it again it's just uh, it's a suggestive uh, you know they've just in the new education policy and uh, every time uh, you know when i say this it's not that you know we are, it's written over there so you know and then it's the state government prerogative like how they uh, adjust according to it but most of this will be uh, you know this will be done for example the tamil nadu state education department will ensure that uh, you know that uh, tamil is taught in their uh, schools and uh, i i believe you know that uh, uh, you know the, the, like uh, when it comes down to implementation question like this will come and uh, the government or the, the concerned uh, stakeholders they will uh, like adopt a more practical approach rather than you know just being uh, just a very much uh, i would say idealistic yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that, that, that's because, a very good point uh, because uh, uh, that's a right issue because this is what uh, like india is aspirational and it's all uh, right uh, even if you are staying in big cities like delhi mumbai or you are sitting in a you are you are staying in a very small town in the in the in the in the heart of say bihar or something like that you see when you travel uh, india in and you go to those cities you see where where uh, the parents are sending their kids even a rickshaw puller is sending uh, his or her uh, so in this medium school so there will be a government school big school in front of that there will be a small english medium school there are more uh, students in the english medium school because the english they he wants he is aspirational the same thing is with the with the with the foreign languages like as you said that it is it depends on the state government it it's and there, i hope that there will be more practical uh, you know approach to it where uh, where uh, because foreign languages they you know they satisfy some kind of aspiration of the, of, of the student of the parents to for, for giving a better life to their uh, you know uh, this thing that is why they do it so so i hope this practicality issue will actually kind of at the end of the day save uh, us now we uh, are at a stage where we are asking questions from the audience so anybody yeah the, the just a very quick uh, reply uh, on uh, what uh, you have been saying see like yeah. for example the three language formula was there you know it's not that uh, this new education policy project it, it was there but you know like many school cbsc schools and other schools and even you know uh, uh, i remember the fact when we were in school at that time also this uh, formula was there and some government schools were teaching telugu but you know uh, having started in a cbsc school you know we didn't care like you know like we, we just took so so it's it's uh, i think it's, it depends upon like you know uh, whether it's possible and again it's the 
will the willingness of the state government and uh, the other stakeholders who are going to do it yeah. but uh, for sure i am uh, you know I, i can assure you that they are very clearly it's mentioned over there that uh, you know uh, uh, in spite of uh, whatever is there and depending because the situation may change uh, and uh, it's it's a very uh, dynamic scenario so people are going to adapt to it as per the needs of uh, students and uh, as per the needs of all the stakeholders mm-hmm. so okay. here i would so like to say just one thing just a second uh, we are kind of confusing ourselves or maybe uh, you know people that there are two things one learning a language learning a regional language second learning all subjects in that uh, in that regional language making uh, you know the medium of instruction as a regional language so these are two very different points we are it's very good that we want to promote sanskrit uh, which is our you know ancient language and we have so much so much literature that has to be translated there are manuscripts and all which which have not been yet published and there there are there are host of you know good points in that so very good that we are we want our own languages to come up right that is one point that is very good excellent we need to promote our culture we need to promote our language good but the point here is the problem here is why do we want tamil or any other language for that matter to become the medium of instruction till class 5 if we do that then this child goes to other uh, school or he transfers then he has to you know or everything was taught in assemblies at one place everything also takes a taught in bengali at some place so learning a language good as a language if you teach fine but every subject history geography science maths etc etc if you teach then there are there are terms which the child will not and suddenly if there is a switch from regional language to english in class 6 5 to 6 right so now in class 6 if you teach everything in english so i mean he has to learn all the terms again in english Just imagine, I have learned up to this. I've learned Rajniti Shastra, you know, and the Pradhan Mantri. I mean, these are very, very small things. But in all subjects, if this happens, it would be chaos. It's a mental chaos in the minds of little children. And I think vocabulary learning is still another issue that the grammar of languages don't language grammars don't coincide. A regional language grammar pattern, the st- syntax would be different from English. So this child would be even confused in transposing that. So learning a language is good, excellent. That yes. you teach multilingualism right. is good. We all are for it. Yes. Right. But, But this, the medium of instruction is what Dr. Nethani is giving us trouble. There are too many schools in each state. So give us ten schools. We think it as regressive. Ten city, ten schools in the city teach this language. Ten schools in this city teach that language. So that that this transfer policy, I mean the transfer cases, will also be okay with it. they go to the school where their school language is being taught like i had a student who went to maharashtra for two years he had uh, learned french here and then he went to maharashtra he couldn't uh, take french now he comes back in ninth and he has missed two years of french so if it is only for one language he can still cope up but agar wahan se marathi se padh ke aata aur yahan usko english padhni padti then it would have been like a, what do i say it would have been like how will he cope all subjects uh, see uh, uh, again you are, uh, dr nitani you are uh, uh, okay. no. can you hear me now yeah as i said you know uh, this yeah. was uh, done with a very good intention That's and uh, then yeah and uh, then again like, you know as i'm saying that uh, all things are very good and uh, then uh, the implementation is the main part and uh, there are difficulties in impl- implementation and uh, as you very rightly pointed out it, it's not that you know uh, like uh, uh, it, it, it's not that difficult because you know we have been a part of the same system where you know people in the government school they used to study they did not only that study hindi they used to elite class and the other class no, no, see, used, like, in your uh, yeah. policy mentioned so i'm not right no like you know people have studied up till class 12 they have studied in hindi medium and uh, they have qualified their cpmt and all that in uh, like you know and then they have become very good doctors see there are people like that it is not that everybody is facing problems and all that see the idea behind this is because math science 
you can understand it better in your mother tongue and the people uh, they, they it is just uh, the idea is that uh, if uh, up till grade 5 the principles of uh, maths or whatever you know science or so and uh, they say that uh, people can uh, do it in a better way and uh, once they they have a strong foundation so it will be easier for them to uh, deal uh, with their you know subjects uh, there may be uh, some issues with the terminology as you said you know Rajniti Shastra or Pradhan Mandri and all that. But, you know, I, I don't think at the but end of the day... You know, even people like us may not understand what is Beej Ganit. No, no. So, so this, is, this, this is this is something individual, I would say. Because, see, like, there... For example, uh, let me tell you this. I, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just languages. I've, I, I've just... I've studied in a school where, where there's a B grade you know there's a b grade in cbsc there's a you know very it's a, like a very uh, hindi is uh, something not very good it does it used to be a hindi or b hindi but the, it's like mother tongue what if you are good in language you are good at it and uh, you know there's a concept of Universal I'm, grammar. I have very much confidence that I can write very good uh, Hindi, and you know, I just I, I, I do it in a you know much better way, and people do come. There yeah, maybe I, I practice, just a uh, mere saying that uh, you know at maybe class five or four they could introduce uh, these subjects in a way that it can do some bridge course yeah. or something like that. So step by step, I mean instead yeah. of doing it till fifth or till eight, eight will be a blunder, I think personal feeling. And even if, if instead of having it till fifth, if we can have it at till second or third, that would be great. But some, okay, you know, some boards are doing English, it till at least till in grade, some subjects till grade twelve. Like you know, this like for example in Tamil Nadu, they do it in Tamil medium. In in uh, Uttar Pradesh, they do it all. That is the problem because Tamilians then cannot get jobs in other places. If they do not know Hindi or English, they they are not getting jobs. They, no, you just no, no, I completely understand. But it's it's. They don't get jobs, but it's not that they be, don't become good doctors and engineers. See, the, the, yeah, that's one a, of the purposes. Of, well, just one of the purposes of getting education is also to earn the living. Yeah, the job but, anyway, but, anyway. But again, all these you know the Tamil Nadu IAS officers, they just in two months they are made to speak Hindi like anything. You know, they, they speak better Hindi than us. They learn it. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, they learn it. So if you want to do it, it, you want to do it. You know, it's just so, it means first we tell them no, don't learn, and then we tell them you have to learn it. <laughs> No, because if somebody wants to do it, he or she can do it. I don't think there's a that's true, that's true. Yeah. yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, we are short of time, and I, I just want to have a couple of things which I think the many. Uh, I also have the same uh, question, and I think uh, someone uh, in the group also, uh, Malika again um, uh, said this that teachers' training is very important. So, uh, what do you have to say about uh, Rajeshi about this? Because you see that teacher's training is that we see the condition of the teacher and ages and all that thing. So, yeah, uh, see, how, how do I, I, yeah, I'll just very briefly answer your question and uh, very, you know, uh, uh, we uh, we know that if new education policies uh, has to succeed, it can only be through our teachers. This is very, very clear. And that is the reason a lot of stress has been, uh, you know, laid on teacher's training and Right from the very beginning, you know, even uh, before this new education policy was officially launched in uh, August 2020, we had programs like NISHTA and other state uh, uh, governments and a lot of money has been put into uh, teachers' training. And uh, in one of the statements, you know, uh, like uh, the minister said that uh, uh, he wants to make it more difficult than uh, being an IAS, you know, being a teacher. And a uh, lot of, you know, comments were there. And uh, because the fact that what uh, you are right now you are sitting there in finland and uh, finland is known for its teachers and uh, it, it just happened that the education minister of finland was uh, here in india you know uh, uh, last year uh, like last last year and i asked her i, I said you know how come you have uh, uh, you know uh, uh, like so good teachers you know and because the fact that in even us you are far ahead than all the other countries and the, she said, we make it very difficult for people to become teachers. 
So I think the government has adopted the same approach. Now we are going to have a beard, which would be like a dedicated course, four years. You right now from grade 12, you know, because earlier uh, it used to happen like if I don't become a doctor, if I don't become an engineer, if I don't become a lawyer or whatever, then I become a teacher. Teacher was not by choice. So now this government, for the first time, it has made sure that people come to teaching profession by choice. And uh, we will be having all these, uh, the syllabus is being revamped, all this, uh, and this is very, uh, you know, transparency is being there and this uh, beard and all these uh, education courses, they're, uh, they're uh, like uh, more and more uh, efficient, more use of technology and uh, more use of, uh, you know, uh, like a good, having good communication skill. And, uh, and uh, the other thing is that, uh, you know, uh, uh, like right from our uh, university teachers to our uh, school teachers, uh, uh, they, they have been very clear recommendation that they need to be paid, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, this, that is very important. Attract, uh, you know, uh, uh, like uh, good people over there, uh, people who are really interested in teaching and who really want to be, become good teachers, not, not because they could not find job elsewhere and uh, yeah. so people just come over thank to you side. thank yeah. you thank you uh, dr nathani uh, actually with this note that uh, you know uh, that teachers will be trained and teachers is a very important profession the nature building uh, that they are the building blocks of, of, the, of the nation and and with them they will be paid well because that is also uh, a very uh, very issue uh, because then why the best best talent will come to teaching if they are not paid okay. So that is uh, one more thing. So with that, I give this, uh, you know, session back to Mr. Abhishek Nandi. And Mr. Abhishek, uh, you can go ahead with your closing thing. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. I am going ahead. Uh, okay. So, uh, I would like to thank all our distinguished guests. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Rajesh Nathani, uh, Dr. Prachi Doval Nathani, Ms. Babusha Verma, Mr. Jaikar Saharaj, Mrs. Kamna Dheer Bhargava, and Mr. Anish Bhola for giving us your time uh, to join us and to share your knowledge, your information with all of us. I would also like to thank uh, all the teachers, all the educators from Pan India and also from abroad to join with us. Very soon, uh, like we also, we have, uh, uh, we as a free Hindi uh, party, we have our association with University of Grenoble. And along with them, we have already designed a learning method uh, based upon a double P double P activity, uh, phonetics, PowerPoint presentation, practice and performance. And uh, art books, which is now only with uh, our uh, partner schools uh, is based upon a double P double P method. Because generally in India, teachers don't get so much of time to prepare uh, for the classes, actually. So keeping that in mind and keeping the new education policy, which is already there in most of the European nations, we have uh, designed this. So very soon we are going to get more and more resources. We are uh, expecting to have more and more uh, 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 sessions like this. On this note, I, I would uh, like to thank all of you and uh, so uh, we are just, we are ending the session. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. Thank you, Haru, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Dr. Nakani. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, Rajesh, sir. We'll have many more sessions. And, thank, you, uh, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. So thank you. Bye bye. Take care. Thank Be you. safe. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.